Hi folks, and welcome back to another journal cover breakdown episode. In this one, I'll be breaking down not one of my own covers, but one by the one and only Ella Maroshenko. We'll dissect and try to recreate this cover illustration published last year in Nature Catalysis, but this time using Blender. A quick disclaimer, all artistic credit goes to Ella Maro Studio. I'll simply be trying to recreate the image as an artistic study, so for educational purposes only, Please don't go copying and plagiarizing other people's work. So Elamara needs very little introduction, I'm sure. Her studio, Elamara Studios, consistently outputs really high quality covers in high impact journals such as the Nature series and Science. Being a Blender channel, I'm obviously very interested in her 3D illustrations, but she does also employ a bunch of other artistic styles, which includes hand-drawn and even cartoon styles. And given how many cover illustrations she's made, I'll hopefully end up making more than just one episode to look at some of her other work. And as we go, we'll get to dissect her techniques in more detail. But to get things rolling, I thought I'd just start with a relatively simple cover. And it's this awesome cover, as I mentioned, published in Nature Catalysis. And it highlights work by Chi et al in which they report how to achieve direct electroreduction of carbon dioxide to short-chain organic products using this copper-silver alloy catalyst in supersaturated CO2 electrolyte. So things that I love about this image, it's really simple but detailed looking. Even though it looks extremely filled out with lots of stuff happening, there are broadly speaking only two things in there, the central catalyst particle and the bubbles of gas around it. The composition of the image really focuses on the subject, which are these catalyst particles. The black background and transparent bubbles really make sure that the eye goes straight to this catalyst particle. Finally, the lighting is dramatic, so it really emphasizes shadows, which makes the 3D elements pop all that much more. Now, based off social media, Ella, I think, usually uses VDS Max, but in this case, we're going to try and get as far as possible using Blender, and you'll see that we can get a fair amount of the way there just by thinking a little bit about how this image is put together. So, let's get started. So, before I start populating this empty default Blender scene with stuff, I am going to declare up front that I will be using cycles, and that's just because since we have a lot of transparent material going, it's just nicer straight out of the box if you use cycles. So let's first just go ahead and bring up the image. All right, so there we go. Um, and as I mentioned, there are only really two main things to worry about, although we're going to break it down a little bit more granularly than that. But so we have our central catalyst, we have all of the bubbles, which come in different shapes. So we have the main globular bubbles that sit more towards the outside. Then you'll notice that we have some bubbles sitting on the surface of the catalyst. And then we also have these smaller chunks of stuff that is sort of scattered around the particle. So we're going to create these three types of, I'm going to assume, gas in stages. But first, let's set up our camera to make sure we have this sort of front-on look going. So I'm going to look down the X direction, and go ahead and just go view, align view, align camera to view, just the positioning just a tad, and let's adjust our aspect ratio. So this is not going to be exactly the correct aspect ratio, but something similar will do. Something like this maybe. Let's just round that off to 1500 in the X, just to be complete. I do have an aerial light here just to help with illuminating the scene as we go, but we will adjust the lighting separately later on. So first let's bring in our nanoparticle, and this is where I shamelessly plug my own nanoparticle asset, which makes this extremely easy. So it's free to download from Gumroad, um, so go ahead and download that and import it into your scene to get started. So here I've got the nanoparticle imported, I will probably need to scale this guy up a bit. Of course you could rescale as well using the domain size and atom diameter, but I'm not too fussed about that for now. So let's go ahead and just position the nanoparticle something like this. And so at the moment I've got a what apparently is a very multi-phase nanoparticle going. What I want instead is to give it a two-phase random material. I'm going to untick spherical nanoparticle and I'm going to drop the truncation level to zero because you can see in the image we have a cubic alloy catalyst, right? So I'm going to make it into a cube and let's go ahead and just rotate this guy to look roughly similar to what we have going in the cover. Maybe something like this. I think we have slightly larger atom diameters in the cover. So I'm going to go ahead 
and play with the atom diameter, maybe something like this, to get approximately the correct size. As you can see in the cover, the atoms are not nicely packed together. And in our nanoparticle here, we do have some disorder already. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and tweak this. Actually, it wasn't too far off. Maybe something like 0.04 for the disorder will be okay. Let's go ahead and just tweak the materials now. We first need to adjust the proportions of our two faces. In the journal cover, we have majority gold with some red dispersed throughout the catalyst. And if we come to the paper, come to the main text, we find that they give us the stoichiometry of the copper to silver, right? So they have written here that there was a molar ratio of 94 to 6 for the copper to silver. So let's try and aim for something like that. Unfortunately, the control that I gave for this phase distribution for the nanoparticle is phase bias doesn't allow for explicit control over how much molar ratio, for example, of each atom type, but it does allow for a little bit of control, basically increasing the value, either positive or negative, pretty close to minus one or plus one to make sure that we have majority one phase. I'm going to say something like that looks roughly correct. It's actually ironically quite close to 94.6, so I'm going to set that to 0.94, and hopefully that's actually not too far off. You can, you can play with the seed, so maybe something like this is okay. Let's go ahead and actually change the colors of these two phases. We want gold and red. I'm going to open up a new window here and just quickly turn this into the shader editor. And so the material that we want is this guy, two-phase random. Sorry, there are some duplicates of these materials in the version that I just imported. In the asset that you download, there should only be one version of the two-phase random. Anyway, essentially, we want to change the, the orange material into slightly more gold yellowy. So let's go ahead and play with the colors, maybe something like that. And we want to actually drop the roughness quite low, given what we can see in the cover, which is quite reflective. So let's drop it to something like 0.3. Let's do the same for the other phase, drop the roughness to 0.3. And now let's take the color from blue to red. I think the roughness might be just a little bit too low. Maybe something like 0.4, maybe something like that is okay. So that's our catalyst basically ready. It's looking pretty decent already. So I'm going to now create the, the big droplets that are floating around the outside. And to do that, I'm going to use my good friend Metaballs. So go ahead and press Shift A, Metaball Ball. And I'm just going to scale him down, move him around and duplicate to create a bunch of droplet looking shapes. And you can go crazy, right? They don't have to be exactly the same as what's in the cover. You can go be a little bit original. So just take a few minutes now to populate the scene. We're looking to create these kinds of shapes near the top left, uh, some in the bottom left and top right corners, and again, some in the bottom right. So once you're done with distributing a bunch of metaball droplets, take all of my metaballs. I now have 56 metaballs. Select them in the outliner and I'm going to press M to create a new collection and call them primary droplets. This is just for ease of housekeeping so that I can now collapse and hide all of those metaballs. Let's go ahead and apply the droplet material. So I'm going to create a new material and call this, let's call this bubble, drop the roughness, Come down to the transmission, open it up and crank the weight to one. So now that's looking pretty good. One thing I forgot to mention is that in this scene that I've started building in, I do have a default HDRI going, which you can kind of see reflected in the droplets. And I also have the world transparent by coming to the render settings and film transparent. This is okay, but I actually want to, at this stage, get rid of this HDRI. So don't worry if you didn't have it, we're going to actually get rid of it now. So all I'm going to do is go to background and click disconnect. And now the only light source that I have is this top aerial light, something like this. Let's go ahead and create the other two types of droplety like things. So first we have droplets nucleating on the surface of the catalyst. And to get that effect, you could, for example, do the same as what I just did with the metaballs, add a new metaball and just distribute them around the surface of the catalyst. Uh, I won't do that though. I'm going to add a little bit of proceduralism to this. So let's add a UV sphere. So I'm going to shift A, mesh, and add a UV sphere. 
and I'm going to roughly align it with the catalyst, something like this. And I'm going to call this object bubble distributor. And you'll see why shortly. I'm going to come and change the shader editor to geometry nodes, click new to create a new node tree. And I'm going to do a simple distribute a bunch of bubbles on the surface of the sphere. So for that, I just want a distribute points on faces onto that sphere. So you should get something like this. Then I want to instance on points. And as the instance object, you could either use points since we're working in cycles, or you could use an actual mesh. I'm going to use an actual mesh just for the heck of it. So let's just toggle the size down a bit. I might want to go from random to Poisson disk so that I don't have droplets overlapping because in reality droplet bubbles would have merged if they were overlapping like this. So let's set it to Poisson disk. Let's set the distance minimum to something non-zero, like 0.1, because that is also the radius of our bubbles. Next, I'm going to add a set shade smooth node after the UV sphere, and also a set material node. I'm going to provisionally apply the same material as I did for the metable droplets, right? So for the metable, I gave it the material bubble. So I'm going to give bubble here too. So if I come back to camera view and click render view, right, we now have some, some bubbles on the surface, which is quite hard to see because we haven't got our lighting fully in place. What I might do is just add a plane underneath and just make use of some bounce lighting for now. This is temporary just to illuminate the rest of our, our catalyst particle. And so one thing you'll notice is that we have quite a lot of refraction going with the bubble material, whereas in the hover, there's not so much refraction and there's also a little bit of roughness or uh, not full transparency, a little bit of translucency. So what I'm going to do is for these guys, I'm actually going to create a slightly adjusted bubble material. So I'm going to take bubble, copy it and create bubble two. So a new bubble material and just select bubble two in the set material. And for this guy, I'm going to first drop the IOR so we don't have as much obvious refraction effects. And I'm also going to have non-zero roughness, maybe something like, yeah, 0.2, but something like that should be okay. And just go ahead and move the sphere to get the bubble positioning you want. I'm just going to move these bubbles back away from the camera in the X direction, maybe up a little bit, something like this. I might scale up this whole sphere so we get a bigger effective area of bubbles. Something like that. So we have some bubbles also in the outer edges, which we can see a little bit here. Right. So the last thing we want to add are these smaller specks of, I assume maybe bubbles or something else. I'm not entirely sure. But to do that, we're going to do something uh, quite similar. Add another UV sphere. This time I'm going to keep them slightly bigger so that it wraps around the, the entire catalyst. So you can see if I come to X ray view that this sphere encompasses a space larger than the, the catalyst. And I'm going to copy the geometry node setup we just had for the bubbles. Come to the modifiers tab and add geometry nodes and just select the same setup as before. But now we're going to make a few edits. So make sure you click the number button to create a new node setup. I should probably give these guys names. So I'm going to call this distribute, distribute small bubbles. And maybe I'll call the other one distribute medium bubbles. Right, so for distribute these small bubbles, I'm actually not going to distribute on the surface. I actually want a fairly dense array filling this whole space. Let's first just disconnect this guy. I'm going to convert that whole UV sphere into a volume. So do a mesh to volume. And then let's do a distribute point in volume instead. Crank up the density. And now I'm actually going to have a much smaller radius, the UV spheres. Let's just plug that back into the instance. So there, those are our smaller particles, and we're going to need to really crank up the density. Let's try something at 300. So now if I come to the rendered view, we can't quite see maybe clearly yet because the lighting is not good, but we have a bunch of these particles all nicely dispersed around. But th those are basically the main ingredients, right, to get this sort of illustration going. Of course, you're free to add more metaballs, play with the shape of the metaballs that we already had uh, to create different droplet shapes, add more to fill up the space, right? We're missing some droplets in other areas, maybe. But now I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the lighting. So what can we tell about the lighting from looking at this shot? 
Well, the first thing is that we have a lot of shadow on this face and a lot of highlights on this side, which suggests that majority of the light is coming from the top left. So let's go ahead and recreate that. I'm going to take this light, shift him over to the left a little bit along the Y direction and rotate him in the X. And I'm also going to bring him forward a little bit. So that gives us lighting from the top. We also need some light to fill in this area here. Again, these lights to fill the other faces is also quite directional. I'm guessing we have, we have either lights coming from, again, left to right, but just from a lower plane, or could be from this side, but I'm not entirely sure. But let's try something first. So to take my light, duplicate it, bring him forwards a little bit in the X, drop him down, and then pressing R twice through rotation, I'm just going to point him at our particle. So how does this look? Okay, we're getting a little bit of fill light. What I'm going to do is go ahead and place a black plane at the back. So add a plane, rotate him in the Y direction. Let's bring him back, scale him up and give it a black material. One last thing that I've noticed with the light is that we actually have what looks to be reflections of sky and maybe sun in the reflections in the droplets. So perhaps Ella is actually also using an HDRI, perhaps an outdoor scene to add a little bit of fill light around the scene. So we can also try adding that. So I'm going to quickly go to Polyhaven and look for an outdoor HDRI. I do know one that I like to use sometimes, which is the Belfast farmhouse outdoor. So there's some blue sky, some sunlight as well. So let's go ahead and download this guy. Go ahead and open up the shader editor. Come to world view rather than object view. And now if you have not had an HDRI sitting there to begin with, you probably have a setup that looks something like this. Making sure that you have Node Wrangler enabled under preferences add-ons. So just make sure you have Node Wrangler set up. Go ahead and click the background node and press Control T to add an environment texture node and go ahead and open up the HDRI we just downloaded. And so that actually adds some of the, the tints of blue and some of the sunlight and also the fill light into the scene. We're going to need to adjust the intensities of some of these lights. So I'm also just playing with the rotation of the HDRI so we can control the direction of the lighting. Something like this is okay. It is quite strong though. We are blowing out a little bit of the reflections too much. So I'm going to drop the strength to something like 0.3. So I think we're broadly getting there. We're missing a little bit the pop from the smaller bubbles. Just going to play with the power and the spread of our main light from the top left just to get the look that we're looking for. But you can see that we're pretty much headed there. You might need to add a few more metaball bubbles here and there to fill up the scene. Also, you might want to up the density and also visibility of some of these bubbles, particularly at the front. So if we move our bubbles to the front a little bit more so that they're visible from the front side, so hopefully that gives a sense of how you might set up a shot like this. I think the whole point is less so about how you recreate this specific illustration, but more just to show that a lot of what you see is achievable in Blender. But hopefully that's been useful for you to follow along and see. So thanks very much for following. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.